my current research focuses on uh, Islamic finance. Um, Islamic finance uh, refers to business practices that are um, based on Islamic law. Uh, the main idea behind Islamic finance is that uh, um, all returns must be based on uh, real economic outcomes. Um, and um, uh, this is an important restriction because uh, this implies that uh, money can only be used as a medium of exchange and not as a commodity. Um, uh, this also implies that um, interest-based loans, uh, short selling, um, uh, derivatives and uh, gambling etc. are prohibited. Um, uh, so what I'm interested in is to see if this makes any difference in, 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 uh, in practice. Well, the advocates of Islamic uh, banking and finance um, actually argue that the, um, uh, because of these differences, uh, the, the primary architecture of Islamic finance is different from that of the conventional finance um, and um, uh, that it represents a, a distinct uh, asset class or a different risk structure. Um, so um, I'm interested in uh, sort of working out as to whether or not this makes any difference in, in practice. Uh, to some extent this got tested by the recent global financial crisis um, where Islamic finance is uh, actually uh, claimed to have shown some resilience. Uh, so the um, uh, the interesting thing, if this is true, the interesting thing would be to see if there is a theory of uh, uh, crisis or there are at least a theory of uh, moderating crisis, um, so, uh, w which is what I'm interested in. Well, a lot of the, the uh, a lot of the, um, the studies carried out in the uh, conventional finance uh, literature can be replicated for the Islamic finance literature, um, and a comparison between the two could actually uh, give us an interesting insight, which could be used to. Um, for example, fine-tune the uh, very architecture um, uh, on, on both sides, uh, which has implications for the contracting parties and the society as a whole as well.